Welcome to the Smart Dating Academy podcast. I'm Bella Gandhi, the founder of Smart Dating Academy and your host. I started Smart Dating Academy in 2009 because I had this crazy knack of giving people dating advice that actually worked, that I took. I've been married for almost 25 years, and now my company helps people to date smarter and to find love. This podcast is meant to bring more love into your life no matter where you are and what you do and we're here to bring more life into your love smart daters happy friday i hope you've been enjoying this week of daily mini podcast the feedback we've gotten has been amazing and listenership is better than ever so first of all Thank you for being here. Thank you for following us this year. It's been exactly a year that we launched the podcast. Woo! So we appreciate all that you've done. If the spirit calls you to it and you've loved this week and you've loved this year, support us, write a review, give us a five-star rating because those are the things that make us little podcasters, feel like we're the little engine that could. So today's Friday and the last day of the first week of peak dating season. And today's topic is creating a dating board of directors. So I talked about this on Good Morning America as part of the three pipelines that people can have to meet people. So if you haven't seen the GMA episode, I will put it in the show notes. But we talked about the three big basic ways that smart daters meet people. Number one is using the apps. Number two is meeting people IRL or in real life, right? Joining groups, going out, meeting people at cocktail parties. And the third one is getting set up by friends and family. Now I can tell you, having had this company for going on 14 years, the holy grail for all single people, what most of my clients wish for and people that I meet all the time, they wish that they were fixed up by people. Now, why is that? Getting set up, holy grail, because if you know somebody and they want to set you up with somebody that they know, you automatically have a frame of reference, right? You feel so much more at ease with a friend of a friend or somebody that your sister-in-law knows because you feel like there's some common point versus them being some random person that you've swiped right to on a dating app. So dating, so getting set up is the holy grail. And now so many clients of mine will tell me, nobody will set me up. They'll, my friends and family will always be like, you're so amazing. I just don't have anybody good enough to set you up with. Okay. So now what I want you to do is if somebody offers to set you up with somebody and they're like, what are you looking for? Just say, I'm looking for somebody amazing, somebody wonderful, and be grateful for any setups that anybody gives you. Even if this setup, okay, happens to be a terrible setup. Okay. It's like you're single, he's single. Okay, great. You should go out with each other. And it was not a great date. It's okay. Still send that person who set you up a note of gratitude saying, I'm really grateful that you thought of me. I think he and I will be friends, um, but don't put the bad karma out there and really kind of rip that person apart for setting you up on a bad setup. It's not that this person thought badly of you. They were just trying to help. I work with people all the time. The guy that owns the salon that I get my hair haircut out says to me, he refuses to set people up anymore. He's got a girlfriend and has for a long time because he once set up two clients and he thought that they'd be great together and they weren't great together. And each one of them was so mad at him that one of his clients actually fired him for trying to do something out of the goodness of his heart. So don't do that. Don't put that bad karma out there. So now I'm talking about setups and what to do. So let's talk about this dating board of directors, this idea that I spouted out there on GMA. And it's actually a really fun idea. It's something I just re, I gave it a cute little label about your dating board of directors, but it's something that we've been talking about a long time at Smart Dating Academy. And it's finding the super connectors in your network and thinking about your network strategically. Okay. So what I want you to think about is, take a step back 
And to create your board of directors, what we're looking for in creating a board of directors are people, it's not your best friends, it's not your mom, the people that are closest to you. That's amazing. And maybe they do belong on this, but the definition of somebody that should be on your dating board of directors is somebody who is a connector, right? Meaning they like to connect people. I'm a connector. I'm a super connector, right? Like, oh my gosh, Jan, you should meet my friend Katie because you both love Oprah's book club. And I think you guys would like each other and you live by each other. Boom. I'll put an email together, create a new friendship. I am that person. Now I'm sure in your networks, you guys have those people that have that are connectors and they know a lot of people. That's a super connector. They like to make connections and they have a lot of connections and they follow through with those connections. So what I want you to do is think about your network of people strategically. And this is where the work comes in. Okay. So what I will tell you to do is sit down and categorize your life because I want you to think about every ding dang person that you know. Okay, because we want to do a very thorough sweep. Think about, and I'm just going to give you categories, like you could set up a circle and make lots of little pie pieces of you, right? And so if I had to set up Bella Gandhi's board of directors, if I was single, I would say, well, how do I look at every single person I know? Okay, I would say, well, let me look at my friends from grade school. Okay, who do I still know and keep in touch with? And then I'd write grade school and then I'd write down all the people that I still know from grade school with reckless abandon, write down everybody that I know that I'm in touch with or could get in touch with. Then I would say, okay, I moved in middle school, middle school friends, blah, 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 blah. Write down all of the people, high school. Then you'd go to college, right? Then maybe you were in sports. Then I got out of school. I My first job was at Arthur Anderson. I know a lot of Arthur Anderson people. People, right. Then I went and worked in my family's business. Right. Then and think about time periods of your life and all of the people that you know through there. You'll be surprised at how many people you know when you sit down and think about it strategically. Right. You can also you can think about it in this way if you're not a social media person. Even if you are a social media person, just think about all those people and then add your social media connections to it. Look at your Facebook, look at your LinkedIn, look at your TikTok, look at your Instagram, really think about all the people. And now what you want to do is do a sweep of all those people. Let's say you end up with 15 people on your list, or maybe you end up with 250 people on your list, right? Of all the people you know, there should be a lot of people if you really sit down and think about this, okay? Now what I want you to do is look at those people and look at who are the super connectors. And you know who they are. We all have our friends friends that, you know, are very involved in the community. Maybe they sit on a lot of boards of directors, right? Maybe they just are those connectory people. They're extroverted. Sweep, clean sweep your list. Take a highlighter, highlight the super connectors on your list, okay? Or maybe go through your Facebook and your LinkedIn, but get a list of those people. And even if you've got two people or you might have 20 people, I don't care, but those are the super connectors in your network. So now you you've got your list. Okay. Now what I want you to do is sit down and I want you to strategically tell these people that you're creating a personal dating board of directors. And because they are a super connector and then tell them all the things you like about them. It's like, if I wanted to put, you know, Lindsay, on my super connector list, I'd be like, Lindsay, you're a dating coach at that fantastic company, Smart Dating Academy. You know so many people. You're bubbly. You're vivacious. You know so many people. You were the president of your kid's school. You know so many people. Would you be on my dating board of directors? And if Lindsay's like, oh my gosh, you thought of me and you, you think I'm connected, sure, I'll be on your board of directors. Then I'll sit with her and say, okay, if you accept a position on my board of directors, let's look at one month out of 2023. And your goal as a member of my board of directors is to set me up on one date in the month of January. And she could be like, oh my gosh, I could totally do that. Okay. What are you looking for, Bella? And I'd say, I'm looking for someone wonderful. And we would sit down and maybe you take everybody on your board of directors out to lunch, have a phone call with them, have a zoom with them if they live far away, but give it a little bit of a sense of import. And then if they agree to be on your 
your board of directors, then they get to say, that's your only ask is you get to find me at least one fix up for your month. Maybe you want people to set you up on two to three dates in a year. I don't know, but this is how I want you to set up your dating board of directors. And you guys, when you think about this, it can work. One third of people have been set up by family and friends that are married. That is an astronomical number. So I want you to think about who are the super connectors in your network. Well, first, I want you to make a list of every single person you know, every single person. Take a highlighter, highlight the super connectors, figure out who you want on your board of directors out of those super connectors. Reach out to them, give it a mission, make them know that it's an honor to be on your your dating board of directors, right? And then ask them what your ask is. Set up a meeting and see how your dating life starts to shift. But this is how you create your dating board of directors. I hope that you found this segment useful. And I hope that you know that if these are the little podcasts that we do, imagine what it would be like to actually work with us one-on-one and have your own personal dating coach at your disposal. It's peak dating season. If you're interested, do the online dating love lab or get on our VIP one-on-one coaching wait list. We are booking well into February, March, and April. We would love to have you on board. Send us an email and we'll do a call with you to see if we're a good mutual fit. So I hope that you have enjoyed this series. Shoot us a note, datecoach at smartdatingacademy.com. We always want to hear from you. And with that, happy Friday, smart daters. And stay tuned for next week's episode with Jackie Pillisoff, Divorce Girl Smiling, who is talking about the 10 reasons why someone didn't call you back for a date. It's really good. And I know you're going to love it. And that drops on Monday, January 2nd. So until then, I bid you farewell and have a beautiful weekend. And I look forward to meeting you soon.